Now, radiotherapy is a treatment that has been avail available for decades for thyroid eye disease and involves um, passing x-rays uh, at the back part of the eye, so not the front part of the eye, at the back part of the eye where the muscles are. So the x-rays go along here and they affect the muscles and the fat of the tissue around the eye. It's a local treatment and it is supposed to, if you like, have local immunosuppressive effects around the eye. So it tries to dampen down the inflammation around the eye. Um, so it's an alternative treatment or an additional treatment usually to steroids because you can't use steroids for a very long time. You want another form of treatment and radiotherapy is useful there to act as an alternative for, for steroids. The radiation works uh, by uh, killing, destroying the, uh, the lymphocytes and the inflammatory uh, immunological cells that are perpetuating this condition. And interestingly, it seems to do this uh, in contrast to steroids in a way that is durable. So uh, after uh, uh, some of the immunosuppressants, the inflammatory cells seem to come back in and regenerate the condition. Uh, interestingly, and for reasons we don't understand, radiotherapy seems to have a more durable effect. So once we refer a patient for radiotherapy, they go to a radiotherapy unit, which is usually part of an oncology service. Um, and here at Moorfields, that's largely done at uh, uh, Royal Bart's Hospital, although we also do it at, at the Marsden. So they'd go for initial consultation with the uh, consultant there who will decide whether it's appropriate to give radiotherapy. When my colleagues at Moorfields Eye Hospital decide that uh, radiotherapy would be appropriate for a patient with thyroid eye disease, I see the patients in my outpatients here and I counsel them of the need uh, and why radiation would be useful for this condition. Uh, often they're surprised because they associate radiotherapy with, with malignant or cancerous conditions and I reassure them that the dose we use is much lower than under uh, cancerous circumstances uh, and that it is directed behind the eye at the eye muscles and the orbital fat where the condition is, is, is festering. The process involves the patient being immobilized such that we can accurately shine our beams at the, at the muscles behind the eyes where the inflammation is going on without, um, uh, without uh, treating the, uh, the eyes themselves or certainly the lenses of the eyes to a dose that could harm them. The patient has what we call a head shell which grips the head and holds the head steady. It has eye holes and mouth holes so it is not claustrophobic but it steadies the head so that we can accurately direct our beams at the areas that we need to treat without, uh, uh, without a chance of us putting the beam in the wrong place. Once the mask has been made then oh, the patient is scanned in the mask such that we can see the structures that we have to treat and those structures that we have to miss. Uh, and then set-up marks are placed on the, on the sides of the mask which allow us to direct the beam at the right areas and uh, at the same time miss those areas that we mustn't uh, irradiate. Traditionally we've given 12 treatments uh, which is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday five times a week for two and a half weeks but there are usually one to two planning sessions before the patient comes. Each day when they come, they lie on the bed, they have the beams uh, directed and, uh, and they're treated without them noticing anything. So the body doesn't sense radiation going in. And as I said, the dose is much lower than that which we give for cancer. We give the same dose uh, irrespective of whether somebody is responding on treatment or not noticing any improvement. And indeed, often the improvement doesn't come until later on, perhaps the maximum benefit being a month or so afterwards. Radiotherapy does not work immediately. Quite often, radiotherapy will stir up a little bit of inflammation in the first uh, few weeks, hence why we give us what we call a steroid cover to reduce that inflammation. So it's not unusual for people with radiotherapy to get worse initially uh, for a few weeks. Most people think it then really kicks in by about four to six weeks, um, where it then has its effect in reducing the swelling and inflammation around the eye. But sometimes it can take longer, uh, a couple of months or so. Uh, however, uh, we don't tailor our dose uh, for the patient. We have a, a dose that we think is the right dose, and by experience we've come to that uh, uh, conclusion, and that dose prescription is given to all our thyroid eye disease patients.
We very rarely give retreatment. It, it would be safe because, as I've said, we use a, a dose of radiotherapy that's much lower than we would use for cancers around the eye or the orbit. Um, but in general, if a patient has not responded once, we reckon that uh, radiotherapy is unlikely to work a second time. Uh, there have been exceptions. I've, I've treated some patients twice, but it's very rare. So the type of patients that you, you, you wouldn't give radiotherapy to are certainly you, uh, diabetic patients because it can make their eye disease worse. You'd also think again about giving radiotherapy to um, young patients and children generally you wouldn't give radiotherapy to and young adults you'd weigh it up um, and sometimes we do give it to, to young adults but um, uh, we, we think about it very carefully and all our treatments are discussed um, with, with patients and, and patients need to be on board. Uh, about that. And what risks are involved in the use of radiation therapy for thyroid eye disease? The risks are very few. Um, uh, we, we have a nice system here, a very accurate system which avoids the lens of the eye, which is at risk from radiation or, from, or indeed from prolonged steroids of developing a cataract. Uh, and, and we need to, to, to appraise the patients of, of any risks, so uh, that, that we do. There are some potential side effects which um, can be serious but ha have a very low incidence and, and that will be discussed at your consultation with the radiotherapist. Uh, there is a theoretical risk that wherever you uh, give radiation treatment there is a slightly increased chance of developing cancers in that area and that's why we tend not to give it to very young patients. But in our experience we've not seen that happen. There are other risks where the radiation treatment can damage certain structures such as the lens and, and, uh, of the eye and produce something called a cataract and again that is pretty, uh, that's very uncommon. Um, the other risk of radiotherapy is slightly dry eyes but that is minimized by uh, giving the radiotherapy um, behind the eye. Two other places that the radiotherapy can affect the eye is one is the optic nerve and cause damage to the optic nerve, the other is retina. Now, the optic nerve is relatively resilient to radiotherapy and it's very, very rare to get any problems that way. The retina can be affected if you have a condition that is already causing ischemia or damage to the retina. And the most common cause of that is diabetes. So patients with diabetes and diabetic retinopathy, um, if they have radiotherapy, they have a higher chance of developing uh, what we call radiation uh, retinopathy, which can be very difficult to treat. So we tend not to give patients who have uh, diabetic retinopathy or similar conditions, um, radiotherapy.